Hey, welcome back to the pod. What are we doing? We're doing b finals? Is that what we decided on? I think so. All right, yeah, we're going to be talking about the finals previewing the NBA finals. No basketball for a full week. Well, no basketball that really matters or that I care about. But uh, crazy NBA Finals matchup should be very competitive. Um, I really have no idea what could happen. But that being said, I think we're probably going to make some predictions today. I guess we could talk about the Conference Finals for a little bit. We sort of touched on that last time. Both series were over pretty quick. Felt like they were over before they really started. Minnesota, they were like, I was thinking about it yesterday. They were like three plays away from a 3-1 lead themselves. A lot of the games were close. And then obviously they got embarrassed in um, game five in Minnesota. That one was not close. But yeah, it really came down to Luka and Kyrie and their finishing ability. Um, Minnesota looked not good in crunch time moments, looked a little disorganized and they didn't know who wanted the ball. I mean, even though it was obviously it should have been Edwards, they didn't really know what plays to run and what spots he wanted to be in, I guess, that he was most comfortable in, which you kind of expect from a 22-year-old, while Doncic and Kyrie knew exactly what spots they wanted to get to. What else? What, what did you guys see from the series, Colton? I'll summarize it real quick. You know, I thought going into the series, Minnesota proving that they were handling clutch situations by uh, beating Denver – you know, coming back from three down, I thought that that was their adversity moment. And it looks like this was it because I predicted the Timberwolves to win because their supporting cast, I thought was strong uh, throughout their lineup. Uh, I didn't expect neither Cat nor Edwards to really show up for most of the series. So that was horrendous. Through most, the fact, I mean, months. Edwards was horrendous. You, he didn't shoot over fifty percent for about a seven game stretch in the playoffs, and it was all bad. The supporting cast did show up for like exactly the four games. <laughs> That's how it was so close. If one of them would have just played a little bit, they would have won the series. Either one, you know, um, they both had a good game four, right? They both played well in that game, but that wasn't enough. And so the fact that neither of them showed up in that whole series basically was the difference. And the, the sporting cast kept it close like I thought it they would. I just thought the two best players would play like they have the two first series because both Cat and Edwards played great the last two series. So didn't show up in this series, though. Game five was embarrassing for the Timberwolves in a lot of ways. But one thing that I thought was pretty inexcusable, and Kirby and I talked about this a lot as we were watching it, is that they just would not adjust what they were doing, even as they went down by 10, 15, 20, 25. You know, they were just getting creamed the whole game, and they would not stop trying to play through Gobert. It was the strangest thing to watch. They were just trying to force it into Gobert, not even down low. It was like kind of like, you know, foul line extended or top of the key and he was just fumbling the ball away he was losing it around his legs they were throwing it to him too low he's just not the kind of guy that you should be trying to go through when when you're trying to mount a comeback and you know they didn't try to adjust they didn't change the game plan they just kept going with the run it through go bear and try to get I think even worse open. than that, though, they wouldn't adjust on defense. They wouldn't throw a double at Doncic. Like, why Why not at least try to double him and make someone else beat you? I know he usually makes the right pass, but he was playing one-on-one -on -one the entire first half, and he out, almost outscored him. Yeah. Crazy and stuff. The, and by the time you got to halftime, the game was over. So that, that was the thing. It was like, they, maybe I still think they should have made more adjustments at the half as well but they needed to make those adjustments like midway through the first quarter and they did nothing. They just kept rolling with one-on-one -on -one defense on Doncic and Kyrie and roll it through Gobert and they got steamrolled. And they were just a, else showed up. They were just a broken team at that point. Like I said, about three plays in those first two games and they could have won both of them and they could have been up 3-1 pretty easily. But when you lose those games and lose those situations, the teammates start looking at each other's side sideways and uh, start looking at the coach's side. Coaches don't have trust. The trust just falls apart. Team falls apart. That's what it looked like in that game. They were happy to get one on the road, and uh, they didn't want to have to go back to Dallas, as the inside guys said. 
Eastern Conference, not a lot to talk about there. Um, other than the fact Injuries. that Boston, yeah, other than the fact that Boston hasn't played anybody in this playoffs. They played Miami without Butler. They played the Cavs without Donovan Mitchell, and they played the Pacers without Tyrese Halliburton. They have they got an absolute cruise lane to the NBA Finals, and so now I'm just hoping, hoping that we get a healthy NBA Finals. Everyone gets healthy, no injuries. So that we can hopefully see a competitive series, and Boston doesn't just get a free one. Yeah, don't want. There's no asterisk rings, I don't think. But yeah, this has been pretty crazy. Pretty uh, l- good luck for them. Yes, they're missing Porzingis, but their team is stacked to the point where Porzingis isn't one of their best two players. Arguably, one of their best three, if you know you include somebody like Drew Holiday or Derek. Maybe Washington. four. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, they could. Just, they have a stacked lineup, so. They have not had that much adversity this playoffs, and I think they will have more in the finals. It's really going to come down to the stars, as always. Uh, can can Luca and Kyrie outshine the Celtics' depth? That that's the that's the biggest question for me. The Mavs' depth depth has been playing well too. Um, I you know they they're playing together on defense, which is pretty impressive around those two guys. And Derek Lively has been amazing out there if he's healthy. And Daniel Gafford has also been playing well in PJ Washington. So I think that it's going to be. Maxi Kleba too. He came in and started playing lockdown defense right off a shoulder injury, which was impressive. For sure. Fingers crossed. It's a long series. It's close series. And if I had to pick right now, I'm going to take. The Celtics, if they have Porzingis healthy because of how easy it's been and how much just of a steamroll fest it's been, they haven't really had to put a ton of wear and tear on their bodies. Yes, they might be less tested, but they they haven't been beat up, I feel like, at all this these playoffs. They're going to be fresh. I know uh, Dallas is getting a week off, but freshness plus depth, that's tough. That's tough to overcome. And they're the home home team, so. Yeah, I find it interesting that so many of the odds makers and it just really all the the betting sites and everything seem to have Boston pretty much as the favorite, and that kind of surprises me considering how strong the West was. I mean, I know Boston's a higher seed and they won a lot of games this year, but man, Dallas has looked like a, a force through these playoffs, and I would think that adjust it a little bit and I mean you know spoiler alert I am going with Dallas to win this series I think that just from a matchup perspective yeah I don't want to trammel all over what I think curve wants to talk about but size is going to be the name one of the name of the games here and I mean Dallas's size has looked really impressive um and they also I just think that when you get to that like when you have Luca and Kyrie both able to trade off and fire on all cylinders I, I just don't know if they have – they don't have two Drew Holidays, right? They have one Drew Holiday. And, and Derek White. And they have Derek White, but I think that I think that Luke is going to be able to find ways to get Derek White on, on his heels um, if that's the way that they decide to defend it. So, yeah, I just think that the way that Luke has been playing, he's been playing like he's fighting for best in the world status right now. Uh, his scoring is on another level. He looks unstoppable. He looks fired up which is great to see fired up in the right ways. Not he's, he still talks to the refs too much, but fired up in the right ways, a little bit less sensitive and a little bit more like he wants to win this thing. I think Dallas has the two best players in the series, to be honest with you. Two best. Um, I think Kyrie and Luca might be the two best players in the series. Tate. I mean, I just don't know. I don't know about Boston. Tatum and Brown. I don't even know if Tatum's the best player in Boston. Sometimes Brown looks like the alpha there. Um, So we'll see, obviously. But I think at this point, I would say the two best players are in Dallas, at least the two best offensive players. Um, Tatum and Brown have the size to be maybe better two-way players, although Kyrie and Luka have both held their own on defense. They're not like switching on to the other team's best player or anything, but they, when they are called upon to uh, play a little bit of defense, they haven't like allowed a ton of blow buys this postseason. Um, 
And I think that close games are going to favor Dallas in this series. I think that they just, those two guys have a lot of confidence right now in closing. PJ Washington hits the big corner threes when called upon. They get the offensive rebounds a lot of the time with Lively and Gafford out there. And I just don't know if Boston is really going to be able to win multiple games by like 15 to 20 points or 10 to 10 to 20 points. I think they might do that once where they have a really hot shooting night and they win a game by 10, 15, 20 points. But I think if it's close, I think if it's, you know, a five point game in the last couple of minutes, I think I prefer Dallas in those sit situations. And because of that, I think Dallas is going to pull it out. Um, Boston, I think they're the better team. Like you said, they have a lot more depth. Drew Holiday is definitely a wild card, but I think he might be their best clutch player. And you don't want Drew Holiday being your best clutch player when you have Tatum and Brown on your team. One of those two guys is going to have to step up big time, hit some big shots. And I think Dallas, their stars, their players, their team, they really know where the ball goes in crunch time situations, who's taking the shot and where they're taking it. And I don't really know if Boston does. I think they kind of swing the ball and look for the best shot. And that works a lot during the game. But when it's like in the last two minutes, you want to know who's taking the shot and where they're taking it. And your team does too. So they can react accordingly, you know, go for the rebounds and stuff. So it's going to be really interesting, but uh, Tatum and Brown, I just don't know if they're going to be able to figure that out. Uh, maybe it's their time, though. It could easily be their time. Here's the thing for me with Dallas, really quick. Luka's going to have to play extreme amount of minutes, which, you know, it's the finals. Everybody will. But those times when Luka's out and Kyrie's the, initi the primary initiator on offense and then Drew Holiday's checking him, a fresh Drew Holiday, those times I think they're going to struggle. So – that's kind of going to be the difference. If Luca plays all 48 minutes every game and just wills it out, maybe then they won't have that issue. But Drew Holiday is a menace on defense, and he can check Kyrie better than a lot of players out there. That's so that's kind of a big moment for me is the luca -less minutes. If if Dallas can hang in there in the luca -less minutes, then they can win the series. But if Luca rests for two minutes and it's a 10-0 run, no. It's going to come down a it's going to come down a lot to three point shooting in those minutes. I think if PJ Washington and DJJ, if they're hitting from the corners, when Kyrie does get penetrated in and, and collapses the defense, Dallas is going to be really hard to beat. DJJ had a little bit of a sketchier game toward the end of the last series, but um, he's looked pretty solid through most of this playoff run. What do you guys expect the matchups to be? Who's going to be Luca's primary? Obviously, there's going to be a lot of switching, but primary matchups, who do you think is going to be on Luca? Who do you think is going to be on Kyrie? Let's start with that. Definitely Holiday on Kyrie. I think that's the easiest. Really? Oh, yeah. I and think Brent Brown on Luca. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. And have Tatum save himself on DJJ. Hmm. Yeah, I could see Holiday on, give Holiday a go on Luca. I He'd mean, probably do both for sure. Yeah, if he gets it going, you gotta throw your best defender out there, and he's he's a big dude. He's like six four. He's not, you know, he's not Luca size, but he's a dog for sure. The matchup I'm most interested in is Kyrie versus the Boston fans. That's <laughs> that's the that's the matchup I'm looking forward to. That's gonna be some insane, brutal booing at the free throw line. But yeah. it seems like Kyrie's kind of made his peace with it. So I'm I'm excited to see how he plays in Boston. Yeah, made, his, yes. made his peace with it in terms of he's kind of accepted some responsibility, which is kind of wild for Kyrie. I didn't know if I'd ever see that day come, but he said like it's not doesn't look great on him, you know, the way that that was handled. He, he obviously he thinks there's more to the story than what was reported and stuff, but He's he's accepting some responsibility, saying that it wasn't his best moment, which we've all known for a long time. Yeah, I expect to be honest with you, I expect him to rip their hearts out at least once. I expect Kyrie to uh, hit a big shot, hit a dagger at least once in Boston, just for the memes, just for the Boston fans freaking out memes. Hopefully we get some good memes from the finals at the very least and some good games. A Luca face. Give me a new Luca. Yeah. 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 Looking at looking at Tatum. <laughs> All right. Final start Thursday. I'm excited.
Thanks yep. for watching, everyone. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.